guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are redoing my how to make sunscreen work under makeup video. It's my most watched video and I thought it was time for a refresh. Now, here I am today, let's get straight into it. I am cleansed, I am serumed and I am moisturised. And that is the first key step to getting sunscreen and makeup to work right, is to take your time building up your basic layers. Um, I always use an antioxidant serum in the morning, it's the best way to protect my skin against UV and pollution. I moisturise because I'm combination, so I always need hydration around my eyes and on my cheeks. And I think that's super important if you want sunscreen to work well under makeup because you need that smooth surface to make everything build nicely. So my skin feels smooth, I can feel that there are no dry rough patches and I think areas like the temples are ones that we often miss moisturiser or don't get enough product on our skin and it creates areas where sunscreen will cling and perhaps pill and no one likes peeling, right? So I'm ready to start. The next tip to making sunscreen and makeup work well is to choose product wisely. Now we're going to cover quantity in a second but the reason this is important is because cosmetic elegance is the key to making the right amount of product work with your work face. Um, so I've gone for today the Abaji Sun Shield Cool Tint with Infrared Defense SPF 50 product which is zinc oxide based, 5% zinc oxide and it's because I'm a little pink today, I've been working out. So that's absolutely critical. So choosing a product that allows you to use the right amount of product. Now, the next step, what is the right amount of product? Now, if you've seen any of my Instagram clips on how to use sunscreen properly recently, you will know that it is a big amount of product. So I'm gonna show you with my handy measuring spoons today what that looks like. So I would recommend using a specific sunscreen for your face and using a quarter of a teaspoon amount, which is 1.25 ml. And as you can see, that is a lot of product. But don't be put off. That's the right amount to give you the, the maximum kind of value from that sunscreen product. And given that most people are not going to reapply sunscreen over a typical working day, I think that's why it's so important to get the most out of that one application. I hope that makes sense. So here you can see what 1.25 ml of this particular product looks like. I would urge you to visualize that for whichever product you happen to be using yourself because products that are more runny or less runny will actually look different. Okay, so how to apply it. I think that the best way whenever you're applying sunscreen is to imagine that you are painting a wall. So you're not applying it like foundation where you might concentrate it more in the T-zone where you have more redness and you're not applying it like moisturizer where you just focus on the areas which are drier. It is a drug essentially. Think of it like a drug and you want an even layer all over your face. So the way to do that as systematically as possible is to do 13 dots. Why do I do 13 dots? You'll see. So, I'm going to literally go one, two, three, one, two, three, we're up to six now, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, and then the rest I'm going to mix in my hands, and then we're going to work it all in. Now, the texture of this product is actually really nice. So I take it around the thicker parts of my face first and then I sweep it around my eyes and I do upper and lower lips as well. Do not miss your eyelids guys. Amazing how many people do. What I think is great about this product is actually the tint on my fair skin is very good. It's very hard I think to find good tinted sunscreens in the fair spectrum. Um, I mean, tinted sunscreen in, is, in general is quite hard, I think. But I think this is great for a fair, slightly redness-prone Celtic skin like mine. Now, I will give that a couple of minutes to soak in and to set so that it's stuck to my skin, so it's in place. But that's 
pleasantly easy to apply that quantity. Are you surprised? I am actually a little. This is the first time I've done this on camera with that product and I'm actually really impressed. I know what you're thinking though. What's she doing about her neck? Haha. <laughs> yes, so I always use a different product on my neck now and the reason for that is to make sure that I give my poor neck the same love and attention that I apply to my face. Because if you don't use a specific product for your neck, you know what you do? You do your face and then you just use the residue on your neck. And particularly when using a, a tinted sunscreen, that's not very practical, right? I wear a lot of white, um, especially for the office. So a non-tinted sunscreen for my neck means I do it right. So I'm using the L to MD UV clear product and I'm gonna treat my neck as the same surface area as my face. So that means two pumps or another one and a quarter ml of um, a sunscreen for my neck. I'm a bit less methodical about it, but I still use my three dot approach so that I'm applying product evenly and then using the residue in my hands, I'm gonna work it in. And the thing is, if you choose a good neck sunscreen, um, it'll be moisturizing as well. So you can essentially skip a step in the morning. I'm all for good economy of time, you know? So I'm gonna rub that in, and of course, I would take it down a little further if I was wearing a lower top. But I think it's always a good idea to keep your neck and chest clear when you're doing your skincare routine because it avoids you missing bits, okay? And it's amazing how necks respond to a bit of love. Good. So that is sunscreen properly applied. The final step though is how to make makeup work with sunscreen. Now, I guess the bottom line is when you use a tinted sunscreen, if it's a good tint, you'll probably need less coverage than you would normally do. Um, so I'm gonna use a bit of Burberry Bright Glow Foundation, which is tediously hard to get at the moment. Apparently it's just being um, sold on the Asian market and distribution is incredibly limited. And I find that to be a very upsetting fact. So I'm going to use half the amount I would normally do if I wasn't using tinted sunscreen. Now, I think in context of sunscreen plus makeup, the key thing is your tools. So you know I'm a beauty blender fiend anyway, and I say this one's a little worse for the wear. Um, but I like the blusher sized one for doing foundation these days. I find the other size, the large size, just too big and a bit cumbersome and I lose precision. So particularly when I just want a little bit more coverage in my T-zone, I like the blusher sized beauty blender. So again, I'm just gonna put product where I need it. I'll dot it on from the back of my hand, which I'm using as a palette. So I never put product straight onto the blender. I find you waste too much that way. And then what's key is I'm gonna stipple it in. Now, I'm sure that's pretty obvious, but I just find if you use fingers or brushes, you end up with a, a scouring motion almost, which means that you just run the risk of dislodging your carefully applied sunscreen. Whereas with this, I'm pushing it onto a dry surface. I don't have scientific proof, but I'm pretty certain that I'm not wiping off the sunscreen I have so painstakingly applied. The beauty with this, um, of course, is its ability to get into nooks and crannies. So I find if I actually <laughs> bend my nose to one side and then the other, I can really get into that little groove where blood vessels often sit and create the appearance of redness, especially as the day goes on and maybe your makeup wears off a little because it's in the T-zone or you have caffeine and your, your face lights up a little. Oh, the modern problems of a working girl. Okay, good. So that's all the base I'm gonna apply. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing for my under eye areas. I'm gonna take a flat brush. I'm gonna use my Sizzly concealer because in number one, it has the perfect peachy tone to neutralize under eye blue. And I think that's really important. And I think I'll do a separate video on color correctors. If that's of interest, let me know in the comments down below. So I'm just gonna use my hand again as a palette. And I'm gonna literally layer on concealer on top. So I'm not rubbing anything in. I'm laying up on as a flat layer just where I'm prone to blue, where my skin is thin at the inner corner. And I'm gonna put a little in the hollow just above as well, a trick that Wendy Rowe taught me because we're often blue there too. And that just helps 
increase the, the tiredness factor, if you will. So, I'm going to blend that in with a baby blender. I wouldn't be without my baby blender anymore these days. I find it the best way to get enough product to stay put. I find if you, again, if you use a finger, other than to sort of just finish it off, you just wipe product off. So you're putting it on, you're wiping it off, it takes forever and you never really get great coverage. Sometimes I put a little touch at the outer corner where I can tend to be a little bit blue or pink depending on how much I've slept. So that is me, skin finished. I would of course go on to do my eyes, my cheeks, my lips, etc. But I don't want to waste time on this particular video. I think the key points I've made to you really do help make sunscreen work with makeup every day. I hope that was useful. I enjoyed doing this one so much. Bye for now.